You may be seated in heavenly places. Today we are looking at the subject of the law of consequence and we will continue on Wednesday and next week Sunday. The law of consequence. It simply means the law of outcomes or outcomes or cause and effect. Now it is believed that we reap what we sow. But I believe that it goes beyond just that. You reap more than what you sow. Give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together. Good measure shall men give unto your bosom. So whenever you sow, you end up reaping more than what you sow. You sow a seed of a corn and you get more than a seed of a corn. If we understand this rule of engagement and the fact that you end up with more than you sow. When David sinned and took Belsheba, killed Uriah, the Lord said to David, he said, you kill Uriah in secret, slept with Belsheba in secret, but he said, I will give your wives, plural, to your neighbor, and your neighbor will sleep with all your wives in the open. And Absalom, his son, slept with all his father's wives and concubines on the top of the wall of Jerusalem, and everybody saw it. His was in secret, the harvest was in the open. So realize that when we talk about seed time and harvest time, or sowing and reaping, it's not just about money. It's more than money. It's about attitudes. It's about choices, decisions, actions, how we treat people, how we handle others. All that determines what becomes of us and our circumstances in life, and not just us, but our kids and our grandchildren. You, you, you can sow a mango seed or a coconut seed. And sometimes a grandfather, a grandmother sowed the mango seed or a coconut seed. They are dead and gone. But the mango seed is still standing there. The coconut seed is still standing there. Generations come and go and eat of that same mango and eat of that same coconut. Meanwhile, the one who planted that tree is dead and gone. What am I saying? There are implications and there are consequences of choices and decisions we make. And therefore, it's not just about making it in life. It's not just about taking decisions. Somebody said to me the other day, Papa, you, you have to say something. Uh, you, this is going on. Have you heard? And I said, no, I don't have to say anything. I don't. And I said, maturity informs me and informs my choices in life. That in everything there is a time, and to the choices we make, there are consequences and implications. And if I'm not clear about something, and I don't understand something, I don't say anything. I leave it to when I have clarity. Because if you don't have clarity, and you speak to a matter, you can err. And there is a point and a time in one's life where you cannot afford certain mistakes. Paul said, when I was a child, I acted as a child. When I didn't understand some things, I took a lot of things for granted. By understanding the law of consequences, there are certain things I can't afford to make mistakes anymore. I can't afford to do certain things anymore because I have a better understanding about the laws of God. And I cannot be ignorant anymore about some of these issues. So please hear me. As long as you live, understand that life is governed by the law of consequence. Our whole life, from the day we came and to the day we live, is governed by the law of consequence. There is nothing you do, right or wrong, without consequence. 
And if you understand that and you live your life by this law and principle, you will go very, very far and you end up well and you will sow and plant a good tree that generations after you will come and eat the fruit of that tree. But if you also plant an evil tree or an evil seed, it will stay there and keep affecting one generation to another generation. I was praying for somebody the other time for a while and nothing was changing, nothing was moving. After a while, anytime I lifted prayer, it was like something was blocking my prayers. And I realized that there is a technicality and a legality I was dealing with in this situation. So I stopped the prayers and I said, talk to me. Tell me history about your father, your grandfather, your background. And as he began to talk to me about the history of his family, his father, his grandfather, the bloodline, I saw that I was dealing with a technicality, a legality. There was a case. There was something, there was a consequence of something that had happened in the bloodline. Many, many generations gone by and is having a negative effect on all the men of that bloodline. As intelligent, as well educated as they were, something was in adding up. There was something that was going wrong with the men of that family. And I realized that until the technicality and the legality is dealt with on the account of the blood of Jesus and somebody obtained exemption from judgment, which is mercy, that cycle will continue. And I said, you have to become a curse breaker. You got to break this thing. It's a curse. Based on the history of your family, there is something that was done many generations ago that is having an effect on the men of your bloodline. And until somebody breaks the curse or the cycle, it will keep reoccurring. If you look at Abraham, God made him a promise. And the promise delayed for 25 years. He took a shortcut to try and fulfill the promise himself as a result of the decision he made. Today, we face a challenge that will continue until the coming of the law. In the Middle East, two brothers from the same loins, and they will fight each other until the coming of the Lord. And God told Abraham that this will be the outcome of the decisions you've made. You took a decision. You made a choice. Your action, this will be the outcome of your action. Abraham lied. He went into Egypt and lied and said Sarah was a sister and he wasn't his wife. Isaac did the same thing in his time, even though Abraham wasn't there when Isaac lied. He did the same thing. Then Jacob came and Jacob also lied and said, I am Esau, your son. Then Ten sons of Jacob also lied. The cycles continue until somebody becomes a curse breaker. Until someone breaks that curse. And I know you are born again and you speak in tongues and you are Holy Ghost filled and you know the scripture. That means nothing to the law of consequence. David was a man of God's own heart. He was a king, a priest, and a prophet. But God said, you're a man of my own heart. You're a prophet. You're a king. You're a priest. But you will still deal with the consequence of your action. I will grant you exemption because I have a plan for you to live, to fulfill. You haven't fulfilled that plan, so you won't die. But the sword won't depart from your house. And this will be the consequence of your action. So if we understand that to every action in life that are consequence, we will deal differently with people. We'll handle people differently. And we will walk very humbly. And one of the things that has really helped me to be humble over the years and keep being humble is history. Because when you study history and you see the powers of the pharaohs of Egypt and the powers of the empires of Rome and the powers and the wealth of Alexander the Great of Greece, and if you look at the power and the dominion of the kings of Babylon, like the book at Nazar, and if you look at the dominion and the power and the glory and the wealth and the gold and the silver 
of King Ahasuerus of the Persian Empire. If you look at the Hitlers of Germany and the Saddams of Iraq and the Gaddafis of Libya, there was a time when Gaddafi was called the King of Kings. And somebody said, Papa, what do you think? And I said, nothing. I said, I have nothing to say. History will judge. History will tell who is king of kings and who is lord of lords. There are things you let history judge. And I say unto you that six and want a response from me, history will judge. That is my response. Let history judge. And when the dust is settled, and when the curtains are drawn down, and when water finds its level, make no mistake, we will know who was wrong or right. But right now, let everybody talk. Let everybody make noise. But there will come a time when it shall be clear about who was right and wrong. Right now, let everybody scream and shout. And let people seek for favor and seek to be in the good books by throwing innocent people under the bars. It's just a matter of time. Hide behind the law. Hide behind the law to settle scores. Hide behind the law to hurt innocent people. But I decree, make no mistakes. One day, you will become a victim of that same law. One day, one day, you'll be guilty of that law. And one day, that law that you use and, and hide behind to hurt others will convict you and will implicate you and you will be hung by that same law. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistake. Are you clapping? I know you are smart. I know you are brilliant. I know you know the law, and I know you are very skillful. You know how to maneuver, but make no mistake. The Bible said God maketh divineness mad. He set the wise backwards, turns their knowledge into foolishness. Isaiah 44, 25. He frustrates the talkings of liars. So keep lying. Keep lying to be in the good books of the powers that be. Forgetting that power has an expiry date and money has an expiry date. Keep lying. Keep throwing people under the bars. Keep scheming. Keep betraying people to defend your position and to defend your money and to defend that which you have, which you acquired it by wrong means. And you have to lie, destroy innocent people to defend it and to protect it. It's just a matter of time when the law of consequence will catch up with you and you will know and understand that power belongs to God. Years ago, I went to meet the president. And while I was in his sitting room, the guy that was in charge of security was telling him something. And he mentioned the name of a man I knew. And he said something that wasn't true. And when he finished, I said, Mr. President, can I say something? He said, yes, Archbishop, what is it? And I said, Mr. President, this guy is misleading you. And he said, how do you? And I said, I know the person he just talked about. And what he just said is not true. And I said, Mr. President, you will be held responsible one day for what you do with the power and the position and the office God gave you. And I said to him, he will be guilty of innocent blood. And he shall be upon his head and the head of his children and his children's children. Sometimes you ask, why me? What have I done? Why is this happening to my children and my loved one? You are asking why you? It's not everybody you touch and you go free. And it's not every money you eat and you spend. There are consequences. There are implications. Come with me to Genesis 8. And 22. Three things you must learn here. Three things you must write down. Genesis 8, 22. While the earth remaineth, mm -hmm. seed time and harvest. You see, realize, he said, seed and time and harvest. Three things. And that was Abraham's problem. Abraham understood seed, but he failed with time. The time was too long. 
The time was prolonged for the harvest to come in. And the problem we all face is between the seed and the time before the harvest. And many miss it in life because they think that they've gotten away. No, you haven't gotten away. When you plant a mango seed, it takes about six, seven years, sometimes eight years, ten years, for the mango tree to mature, to bear fruit. But when it bears fruit, it stands there for a long time to feed many and many generations. And when you plant a mango seed, when it bears fruit, it comes with so many. It's not just one fruit, many fruits to profit so many. Cocoa, cocoa. My dad had a cocoa farm. It's still there. Still there, I haven't been there. I'm not interested in cocoa. He planted it, but the cocoa farm is still there. It's still yielding. Some people are benefiting from it, and I have no problem with it. They can profit from it. I have no problem with it. But my dad planted it, and my dad is gone, but the cocoa is still there. So it's not just about planting. And it's not only about what your father did or your mother did. It's also about the choices you are making. So take heed. Take heed of the decisions you are making. Take heed of how you treat others. Some of you single ladies, before you married, you used to come to church. You worked at the church. You cleaned the altar. You cried for God to give you a man. Now that you have a man, you have become Madame, the queen. And you mishandle the maid. You mishandle drivers and others and servants in your house. You don't treat them well. When you cook, you don't give them the same food. You give them money to go and buy a boy and Gary and Kenke. They don't deserve the food you and your husband eat because you are the madam. You are the queen. But Queen Vashti, remember that there is always an Esther in the shadows. I know you are queen. Yeah, I know you are queen. And I know you have arrived. And I know you are very powerful. But don't worry about your power. There is one that is more powerful than you. I know you, you are mighty, but there is a, the almighty. So enjoy. Enjoy your power. But once you enjoy, be careful what you do to others and how you handle others when you're offended. I was telling them in the first service that sometimes a bishop will come to me, especially when I live in America. When I come back, Bishop James will tell you, some of the bishops and pastors will come to me and say, Papa, Papa, be careful. Bishop James wants to take your church. And I said, he can take it. The church is not mine. He can take it. He can take it. Somebody else will take his, his church. And every time I come, they'll poison me. Sometimes they'll call me, Papa, you sit in America. Bishop James is planning. He's scheming. He's won the heart of the people from you. He's taking your church. So when I can say, Bishop, Bishop James, they say you are planning on. I hear you are scheming. He said, who said? I said, me, I'm telling you, Bishop James, I'm hearing things. He said, Papa, you too, you worry your head after all these years. So I decided to do something. When people come and say, Bishop James said, I will call them and I'll call Bishop James. And I said, Bishop James. Then I said, so, so, and so. You said, Bishop James. He said, Papa, you misunderstood me. That wasn't what I meant. I was saying something else. It's a misunderstanding. And they stopped telling me because they knew that uh, I'll call Bishop James and I'll call them. But that spirit is in this country. And it's where Ghanaians are. And when you are in authority and you are power, and you can hide behind the law and use governmental powers and vehicles to settle scores and to hurt other people, you got to be careful because people can use you. I'm telling you. I had a meeting with President Rawlings some time ago, years ago, over a situation. And I said to him, I said, Mr. President, this individual is innocent. And he said, Archbishop, how do you know? I said, I know him. I won't mention his name. I said, I know him very well. I said, I know him. I know his wife. I know his children. Mr. President, this man is being set up and they are deploying your power because you are the most powerful person in this country. And they are using you 
They are using you to hang an innocent man. And I said, Mr. President, you have children. Please investigate the matter carefully. So he said, call me the vice president. So Professor Mills came. And he said, act bishop things and believe that this man is innocent. Then he called the attorney general. I won't mention his name. And he said, please look into this matter because the archbishop feels very strong that this man is innocent. And I said, Mr. President, somebody's blood will be required of somebody if those in power are not careful how they handle this person. That's all I said. The person is still here. He's a member of MPP. I won't mention his name. And from there, I went to serious fraud. And I met two gentlemen who were investigating the matter. And I said, I just came from the office of the president. And I wanted to go on record that the man you are investigating, with all the evidence and the facts you say you have, is innocent. He's been set up. They went to court for over three years. And I think about the fourth year, the prosecutor came out before court and admitted that he was given a file to prosecute this guy and that the man is innocent. And that all these years they've dragged the man to court, he was given a file full of lies to hang the man. And the court dismissed the case. But by that time, the man has lost everything. There were times he came to me and he said, Archbishop, if it's not for my children, I'll end my life. I said, don't end it. It's not worth it. I said, don't die. Leave. And one day, you shall be vindicated. I won't tell you the rest of the matter. But before our own eyes, it took four years. But vindication came. Let me tell you, vindication is in the womb of time. It's just a matter of time. Seed, time, and harvest. And let me tell you something. Most times people say, well, you reap what you sow. No, you don't reap what you sow. You reap more than what you sow. So don't be fooled. Make no mistake thinking that you reap what you don't. No, you don't. You don't reap what you sow. You reap more than what you sow. But it's a matter of time. And the time is our problem. We can't endure time. We can't stand our ground. We are afraid. We are afraid of waiting. We are afraid of time. But ladies and gentlemen, time and chance comes to all. And if you just wait and stand your ground, it's just a matter of time. You know, the, the psalmist said something in Psalm 37, so very powerful. He said, I saw this mighty oak tree with many branches. Then he said, I walked away. Then he said, I came back and I diligently sought for it. And behold, it was in there. It has disappeared. That is what people who think they are powerful hang, stay behind the law to hurt others. That is what happens to them. And I've seen people on their deathbed asking for me to come and asking for my forgiveness. And I said, I don't owe you any grudges. I don't owe grudges. I don't keep grudges. I don't. When people throw me under the bars, I have had people pay me evil for the good done to them. And sometimes people will say, Papa, aren't you hurt? And I said, no, I'm not hurt. I said, I'm not hurt. I feel sad for him and for them because they will reap more. Yeah, they betray just me. Many shall betray them. Mine is single. There shall be many. But the, what is the problem? It's a time issue. The, the problem is time issue. We forget about the time. Look at Galatians 6, 9. Look at Galatians 6, 9. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing for in uh -huh. due season we shall reap yes, if sir. we faint not. Uh-huh. Seven. Galatians. Be not deceived. Uh -huh. God is not mocked. 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh -huh. For he that soweth to the, his flesh yes, sir. shall of the flesh reap corruption. Uh -huh. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap He life said, make, the, the word be not deceived means make no mistake. Make no mistake. For whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. But what he should have added is, he shall reap more. Because you always reap more than you sow. And he said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. God, make no mistake, God is not mocked here. For whatever a man sows, your actions, how you handle people, how you treat people, the evil you speak about others, and how you undermine others, and how you hide behind power, and the law to settle scores with others, all those your schemings, to be in the good books of people, to be favored. But to lucky tuku masada, salanda kasahand, devalandu kawasan, tei kutulahas, ikulundu kafasan. Let the message fall upon their feet and upon their heads in their palaces. It will catch up with you. It's just a matter of time. And when it comes, you will reap more than you have sown. So go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Break the legs of others. Destroy the innocent. You will be guilty of the blood of the innocent. You will. It's just a matter of time. Let me show you a scripture. Proverbs. Proverbs 17 and 13. Look at something here. Proverbs 17 and 13. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, mm -hmm. evil shall not depart from his house. You, you see? It's just one thing you did. And that evil there is ingratitude. Ingratitude. There are people who we have helped to become somebody. People who didn't know their left from their right. We have to literally guide them, hold their hand, pray them through. And today they made it. They are big guys. And they have forgotten that once upon a time somebody prayed for them. Somebody helped them. They disrespect their own father and their own mother. They are elder brothers and sisters. They have no regard, respect for nobody, for the elders. Because they have arrived. They talk to anybody as they please. They have no honor for dignitaries. For dignitaries. They have no honor and respect for dignitaries. They have the audacity to speak against anybody they please. And if they have an issue with you, they have the audacity to go online, say anything they want to say, and think they can get away with it. They have an attitude of, of, of a defiance. Yeah. Yeah. You are joking. You don't know the scriptures. The Bible says you know not the scripture. That's why you err. But if you know the consequence of the law of reaping what you sow, it's not everybody you can touch. And it's not everybody you go against. When you don't understand something, Shut your mouth. Say nothing. Give it to time. But everybody thinks we live in a society, everybody can get up and just talk, just insult, say whatever they want to say, and think you are getting away. You are joking. Whether it's tomatoes or onions or pepper, or mango or corn, or cocoa or coconut, it will germinate. It will grow. It's just time. And it will come. And when it comes, it's not going to affect just you. It will affect yourself, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and everything that concerns you. Go to your village. See your father's house and your mother's house. You will see some trees that were planted by your grandfather or great-grandfather or mother. It's still standing there. The ones that planted it are dead and gone, and the tree is still standing. There are decisions and choices you make today that will not just impact your life, but it will impact generations to come. So please be careful. I know you are connected. I know you are brilliant. I know you are skillful. I know you are loaded and I know you are sitting pretty. It's only because you don't understand history. But if you want to know how powerful you are, study history and history will remind you and help you about how you should live humbling and don't let things get into your head and think you get away. Nobody gets away with anything. Nobody. 
Nobody gets away with anything. Even after you are gone, the consequence of your action will still be affecting those you love and you left here. Come with me. Look at another scripture that I believe will help you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. Tell somebody you are a curse breaker. You are a curse breaker. Tell somebody. You, I, I can't hear you. It's very low energy. Tell somebody you are a curse breaker. Now, give it, give it to me on a higher level. Tell somebody you are a curse breaker. And, and then say, I am a curse breaker. I'm a curse breaker. You know, there are families. You study them. And the grandfather was very arrogant. Father arrogant. All the sons, daughter, very arrogant. They despise people. They look down upon people. They disrespect dignity and they disrespect royalty. I know a lot. I see a lot. But I refuse to disrespect and dishonor dignitaries. I don't do that. I don't do that. And sometimes it hurts. It hurts when you know things and you can't say it. Because the motive of saying it is to disrespect and dishonor somebody, to justify yourself. It's not worth it. I will endure and I will wait till my change comes. Ah, and when my change comes, I will be vindicated. Say yes. So he said, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For yeah. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. He said, I'm a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children uh -huh. unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Uh -huh. Look at it. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. You see, you see the benefits here? He said, I will show mercy to a thousand generations of those who love me. But for those who provoke me to jealousy by serving other gods and putting their confidence in the arm of flesh, disrespecting and despising me and refusing to honor me, he said, my curse will be upon them to the third and fourth generation. And I was studying something the other day. I went to look at my grandfather's history, my father's history. To me, third generation, my children, fourth generation, my grandchildren, fifth generation. And I said, oh, I see, Bishop James, I need to do some warfare now. Yeah, 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 I have to do some warfare now. So I started praying some prayers and asking for exemption from judgment, exemption from consequences. And I said, Lord, mercy, mercy. Somebody scream, mercy, mercy. Somebody say exemption, 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 exemption from consequence. And I said, Lord, I wasn't there. I was not part of it. I understand. I understand that the fact that I wasn't there and I wasn't a partaker of it does not exempt me. But that is the reason for mercy. Mercy is a provision. You've made a provision giving us mercy. And I appeal for mercy. I appeal to God for mercy. I appeal to mercy. It's not just what your grandfather did and your grandmother did, but it's also what you are doing because we take so much for granted as a generation. Yeah. We live anyhow. Do anything. Come with me. I want to show you some scriptures. Come with me. To Job 4, 8 and 9. Even as I have seen, mm -hmm. they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness uh -huh. reap the same. Reap the same. They plow Iniquity. Iniquity. So wickedness. Lawlessness. And they devise wickedness against innocent people. The Bible says they shall be guilty of the same. They shall be hung by the same. They'll fall into that same trap. Go ahead. By the blast of, by the blast of God they perish. Uh -huh. And by the, the breath of his nostrils they are consumed. This is the reward. This is the reward of those who hide behind the law. Those who hide behind the powerful to hurt others. This is your reward. It's a matter of time. Tell somebody it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Proverbs 26, 27. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. Mm -hmm. And he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. 
Tell somebody, don't dig a pit. Oh, don't dig a pit for others. Don't throw stones at others. Don't do it. Character assassination. Don't do it. Don't take up a fight with innocent people. And don't fight battles that are not your battles. Don't do it. Don't do it. I was dealing with a situation some time ago when somebody came to me and said, Papa, I rarely gave it to them. And I said, you were wrong. He said, but I fought for you. I said, no, I don't need you to fight for me. Don't do that again. I said, you are fighting a battle you can't win. It is my fight. Leave it to me. And I know how to fight. I said, you, you were wrong to do what you did. Don't insult dignities on my behalf. Leave it alone. Give it to time. Sometimes it's good for people to think they are winning. Yeah, let them feel so powerful. Let them think they are winning and they are smart. Look at Isaiah 44, verse 25. And then we'll come back to this scripture. Yeah. He frustrated the tokens of liars. He frustrates the tokens of liars. The more they lie, the stronger we become. The more they lie, the better we become. Are you hearing me, somebody? Frustrate the tokens of liars, O oh Lord. Frustrate the tokens. Go ahead. Make a divinest man. He make a divinest man in sanity. Let that be their portion before the Lord and from the Lord. Go ahead. And turn wise men backwards. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And it makes divine, it makes their knowledge foolish. Make their knowledge foolish. Turn their knowledge into foolishness. That was the prayer David prayed about. One of the wisest men that ever lived, Ahithophel, who was the grandfather of Solomon. The man that was loaded with counsel. And David heard that Ahithophel had joined his son Absalom against him. And he went into prayer. He said, oh Lord, just one thing. I know I have erred and I have transgressed your law. But one thing, one thing I pray. He said, tend the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Let his knowledge, wisdom, and can be disregarded by those who hear him. And the Bible says he ended up hanging himself. He was from the land of Gilead, but he could not heal himself. Yeah. Hoba Kusama, lift up your hand, pray in the spirit. Lift up your hand, pray in the spirit for one hour. For one minute, one minute, everybody, just pray. Just lift up your hands and pray. Talk to God. Talk to God in your own language. I can't hear you. I'm not hearing you at all. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying the spirit. I can't hear you. Keep going on. Keep it on, keep it on. Keep it up. Keep praying. Just pray in the spirit. I want to give you some time to pray. Pray. Pray the scriptures. Pray in the word. Pray in the spirit. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep praying, keep praying the spirit. Leke momo shata pala baba. Itrepesete de bebeke. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Somebody just lift it up, lift it up. You can be on your feet. Put your hands together and lift it up. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, put your hands together and pray. Rakabo shakatakala baba. Reke mo 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 mo. Lika takapaka sokala baba. Leke mo sokotolo bobo bo. Any demonic consequences. Any satanic hold. Any demonic power. Any demonic works. Any satanic agenda. We override it. Any satanic consequences that the enemy has deployed over and against your house, over and against your family, over and against your loved ones, in the name of Jesus, as we lift up prayer, as you clap your hands, somebody pray, lift it up, 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 in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let every satanic worse 
every demonic agenda, any satanic consequences, any arrows the enemy is firing against your house, against your family, against your loved ones, in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift it up, lift up prayer, lift up prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Rakabo salabagadaha. Likamo sakatabagade. Rekekelebebebebebe. Ropokotokorobobosa. Rekapo sakataribaha. Rekemeseketelebebe. Rebakapo satarababaha. Lekemamamamamo. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift up prayer. Clap your hands if you can. In the name of Jesus, we appeal to the mercies of God. We appeal to the mercies of Jehovah. The scripture declares, Thou, O Lord, are the shield around me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. We declare in the name of Jesus, any consequences, any uninvolved consequences, anything you have no idea about, anything that has been deployed, as a result of a bloodline curse in the name of Jesus, we appeal to the mercy of God. Let exemptions come your way, the way of your children, the way of your loved ones. Somebody pray. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. And the agenda of the enemy to overwhelm your life, to overwhelm your spirit, to overwhelm your soul, to overwhelm your house, to overwhelm your health, to overwhelm your life, your family. We declare in the name of Jesus as the psalmist pray, Lord God Almighty, come to my help, come to my aid, come to my defense. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon him. Call upon him. Call upon him. The psalmist said, Hear my cry. O oh Lord, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me, O oh Lord, to the rock that is higher than I. Lift it up. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift up prayer. Lift it up. Lift it up. Exemption from judgment. Exemption from consequences. Exemption from any demonic and satanic agenda. Somebody pray. Lift up prayer. Clap your hands if you can. Lift it up, lift it up. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and... Give God praise. Put your hands together. Give him praise. Amen. Be seated. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. Thank you for praying. Ecclesiastes he, chapter 10. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Uh -huh. And whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. That word means, if you set a trap for someone else, you will become a victim of that same trap. Tell somebody, don't do it, don't do it. Tell somebody, don't hide behind the law to set people up, don't do it. Somebody will set you up or your children or your grandchildren will be set up. It's just a matter of time. When the harvest comes, it comes heavy. So don't do it. Don't break the hedge. Breaking the hedge is setting traps for others and thinking you will get away because it is your power to do so. It's just a matter of time. You see, if we understand some of these principles, we'll be very careful how we deal with others. You know, my grandfather died at the age of 109. And she said something that was very interesting and funny. She said, Nicholas, Nicholas, me, me, how be I? He said, I don't trouble anybody. I just sit by my gate in the night. I don't trouble you. Pass. But if you come, if you come to my house, 
If you try to enter my gate, that one, it will be another story. But as long as you are passing by and you don't enter my house, I have no problem with you, but don't enter my house. Then one time she said, Nicholas, you are a young man. And you said you will suffer. Respect yourself and I will respect you. So I said, Nana, Nana Mate, Mate, I will respect myself. She lived by simple principle. She was 109. My father was 80. She was 109. Very simple principles. And yet very powerful. And I learned a lot from her. I won't cross your path, but don't cross me. I won't touch you, so don't touch me. Because it's not everybody you touch and you go free. I'm telling you. There are some people you hurt them, you touch them, and you will wish you were not born. Because the implication will be so heavy. I'm telling you. Let me show you another scripture and then we'll pray. I see you are very quiet today. I don't hear the hallelujahs and the praise the Lord. Come with me to Esther chapter 7 and verse 10. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. You see, there are Hermans in this world. There are Hermans in the church. There are Hermans at the marketplace. There are Hermans on the political scene. In political scene, there are Hermans. People who have the ear of powerful people, the ear of the king, the ear of decision makers. And they scheme and they manipulate the powers that be to settle scores with others through the powers that be. And there was a man by the name of Haman, the Agagite, from the nation and the tribe of Amalek. And the Bible said that God has sworn that he will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. You know what the danger is sometimes? Sometimes we go to deliver Amalek and we don't know that it is God that is fighting Amalek. So you go to fight Amalek and you end up fighting the Lord. And the Lord says, where are you from? You want to fight me? I'm fighting Amalek and you are coming to rescue Amalek. From my hands, how dare you? It's risky. It's very risky, eh? Bishop, to pray emotionally. Emotional prayers are dangerous. You have to be led by the Spirit. I was dealing with the situation the other day and Bishop was with me. Everybody was praying and I wasn't praying. I just sat down. I was quiet. People were fine praying. I didn't pray. I just sat there because I, I, I wasn't seeing clear. I didn't know how to pray. And Bishop was praying in tongues. And I said, at least, that is wise. He's a very wise man. He's praying in tongues. At least, I don't hear what he's praying. And after a, a long time, I was quickened. And I knew what to pray. And I said, everybody say in the name of Jesus. And I started making proclamation. As soon as I finished, something lifted in the atmosphere. But before then, I didn't know what to pray. I didn't know what to pray for. I was quiet because I was ignorant about what was going on. I couldn't make sense of it. And I sat there in the midst of all that was going on. Somebody was crying and I just sat quiet. I sat quiet and I waited. As soon as I had illumination and that trance came, I began to fire. Hear me? This work eh, is governed by laws. By laws. And here was Haman who had so much power through demonic means. He had come into money, into influence, into power. Did nothing for the king but was elevated through some demonic manipulations and powers. He became a big man had so much access and he had the ear of the king and he decided that Mordecai disrespected him so he will use the king, hide behind a law 
to destroy Mordecai and all the Jews to prove how powerful he was. So he set up a gallows to hang Mordecai on the gallows. Today, I want it to go on record by divine authority that anyone, anyone that have set a gallows for us, home and abroad, domestic and external, let them hang on that same gallows. And anyone using and hiding behind any law and anyone to devise our head, let them be guilty of that law. Let them be implicated by that law. Let them be hung by the same law. Put your hands together and pray right now. Stand on your feet. Put your pray that prayer. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. He built a gallows for Haman and he was hung on it. Let them be hung on the very gallows they have built. Let them fall into the pits. Let them fall into the pits and the nets they've set up for us and our house. And our children. In the name of Jesus, enforce the scriptures. Amen. You know, I want to show you a scripture in Lamentation chapter 5. Lamentation chapter 5, eh? From verse 7 to 16. You know, sometimes I ask myself. What is really wrong with Africa? And this scripture came to me. Look at Lamentation 5, 7 to 16. There are some very dangerous things there. And it has to do with the law of consequences. Go ahead, read. Look at it. The New King James says, Our fathers sinned uh -huh. and are no more. Uh -huh. But we bear their iniquities. The tree they planted is still there. They've gone, Bishop James. But the tree... He's still standing in your father's house. You haven't been there for some time, eh? your father's house. Visit there one of these days, you see. You live in Accra. There's a tree in the village. Odoko. Yeah, the tree is still there. At Odoko. The old man is gone, but the tree he planted is still there. Go ahead, listen. Servants rule over us. He said, he said, servants are ruling over us because of what our fathers did. The choices they made, they sold human beings into slavery for a bottle of schnapp and whiskey. And for money, and they made money through the slave trade. And it has brought a consequence upon their children and grandchildren. He says, servants are ruling over us. Go ahead. There is none to deliver us from their hand. And it's difficult to deliver. I've seen people, it doesn't matter how many times you pray for their deliverance, it doesn't work until, until you deal with the consequence and the curse and the effect. Nothing changes. Go ahead. We get our bread at the risk of our lives. Our bread, we sweat at the risk of our life to eat. There's a reason for that. Because of the sword in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Our skin is hot as an oven. Yes, sir. Because of the fever of famine. Uh -huh. They ravaged the women in Zion, the maidens in the cities of Judah. Yeah. Princes were hung up by their hands. Princes. Princes. Fiery squad. Listen, the scriptures here, eh? if you don't understand these scriptures here, eh? you will read it and you won't know anything. But if you take your time and humble yourself and the Holy Spirit guides you and removes the veil, when you read the scripture, it will make sense and you will walk humbly and be very careful. Go ahead. And elders were not respected. Elders are dishonored and disrespected. There are no elders in town anymore. People get they insult everybody. There are no elders. There are no dignitaries anymore in the land. Everybody just says, children, children, children have become rulers. You know, in the times of Jesus, there was a man 
the Bible calls him the young rich ruler. He was rich, he was a ruler, but he was young means an amateur. Somebody who has been, been tested and tried, but has come into money and providence and power, they misbehave. They use power to destroy because they don't know the value and the meaning of power. Go ahead. Young men ground as millstones. Mm -hmm. Boys staggered under loads of wood. Yes, sir. The elders have ceased gathering at the gate. Yeah, there are no elders at our gate anymore. Mm -hmm. Where are the elders? At the gates of Ghana. And at the gates of Africa, there are no elders anymore. Because when an elder speaks, he's dishonored and disrespected, and children will throw stones at the elders. So the elders have decided to say nothing because they don't want their dignities and honor to be dragged through the mud. So they keep quiet. And a nation where elders don't speak and elders don't sit at the gate, those nations are doomed. They are doomed. And I said, money without direction and purpose is disaster. And a nation that have no elders to sit at the gate to give direction is headed for disaster. May God remember us and deliver our nations. Go ahead. And the young men from their music, uh -huh. the joy of our hearts has ceased. Yes, sir. Our dance has turned into mourning. Uh -huh. The crown has fallen from our head. No crown. No crown on the heads anymore. The glory, there is no honor and glory upon the heads of our nobles and our heads anymore. Strangers have devoured us and taken our crowns and our honors. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Stop there. Lift up both of you and stand on your feet. You've been sitting for too long unless you have a problem with your ways. Lift up your hands. Say, Heavenly Father, I have heard your words. And I stand in awe. I'm shaking. I'm moved. I'm deeply touched. I am humble. For I have been reminded of the law of consequence. Today, I acknowledge that your steadfast love never ceases. That your mercies never come to an end. They are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Say today, Heavenly Father, I repent of my wicked ways. And from today, I will never, I will never hurt anyone. But I will do right by all. I will do right by country. I will do right by God for the sake of my children's children and the generations that comes here after. In the name of Jesus, say, I obtain exemption from judgment. I, ex I obtain mercy in the name of Jesus from consequences on the account of the blood of Jesus. Will you put your hands there and pray that prayer right now? Are you praying? It's a serious moment. Now, give me Psalm 41. Psalm 41 verse 5. Psalm 41 verse 5. Enemies speak evil of me. When will he die and his name perish? I want us to pray a prayer. Anyone, anywhere, home and abroad, known or unknown, speaking evil and ill of us and of this house, let it be ill with them. Let their voice be discredited and silenced. Yea, let them be disadvantaged, turn back and be put to shame. Pray that prayer. Let them be silenced and be discredited. Put your hands down. Pray that prayer. Anyone, anywhere, speaking evil of us, of this house, 
in the name of Jesus. Let it not be well with them. Yea, let their voice be discredited and be silenced in the name of Jesus. Lift up prayer. Pray that prayer. Amen. Give me Psalm 62 verse 4. Psalm 62 verse 4. There is evil in this world though. I'm telling you. Once you are going around about your business with a clear motive, there are people scheming. And they will not go unpunished. Go ahead. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. Uh -huh. They delight in lies. They bless their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Any group of people, anywhere, home and abroad, who are consulting, scheming, devising, planning evil to bring us down, to discredit us, to bring shame or reproach or disgrace, whoever they are, wherever they are, let them scatter. Put your hands together, pray that prayer. Scatter, O oh Lord. Scatter them. Divide their tongue. Let their tongues be divided. Let there be confusion among them. Scatter, O oh Lord. Scatter them. Scatter them in their house. Let them not go unpunished. Push it, push it, one more time, one more time. Now, give me Proverbs 11, 21. Proverbs 11, 21. Though hand join in hand, uh -huh. the wicked shall not go unpunished. Mm -hmm. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Hear me. Any group of people anywhere, whether they are unbelievers or believers, who have joined their hands, that means they've come together, cartels, they form an alliance to devise our hurt and demise. Whoever they are, wherever they are, let them not go unpunished. Let them and their house not go unpunished. Declare it. Put your hands together. Declare it. Psalm 55, I think it's verse 9, divide their tongues. Divide their tongues, O Lord. Yeah, destroy, O Lord. And divide destroy, O Lord, uh -huh. and divide their tongues. For I have seen foulness and strife in the city. Any group of people anywhere plotting the head of others and evil against others, let the Lord divide their tongues. Put your hands down. Let the Lord divide their tongues. Go ahead. Divide their tongues. Set confusion among them. And let them not go unpunished. Oh Lord, let them be discredited, be silenced, be disadvantaged, and be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Now, give me, give me Jeremiah 20, 11. Give me Jeremiah 20, 11. You see, these scriptures, eh, 
I want you to pray it five times, seven times a day. Keep saying it, keep enforcing the same thing. It will come to pass. God is under obligation to perform it when we declare it. When we don't say it, it's not under obligation. But as soon as we declare it, heaven is under obligation. Look at Jeremiah 20, 11. One, two, declare it. But the Lord is with, with me, me as a mighty, mighty terrible, terrible one. one. Therefore, my, my persecutors shall, shall stumble and they, they shall, shall not prevail. prevail. They, they shall be greatly ashamed, for they, for they shall, shall not prosper. The, the everlasting confusion shall never be Say it again. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, ashamed for they, they shall, shall not prosper. The for the everlasting confusion, confusion shall never Say it one more time with some energy. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. For they shall not prosper. The everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Hear me. Hear me. Turn to the opposite side and declare the same thing. Turn to the opposite side. Declare the same thing. One, two, go. But, but the Lord Lord is with me, me as a mighty, a mighty terrible one. one. Therefore, Therefore, my persecution shall stumble. And they shall not prevail. prevail. They shall they be greatly ashamed. For they, they shall not, not prosper. Their everlasting, everlasting confusion, confusion shall never... Shall Turn somewhere else and declare the same thing. Another direction. Turn to another direction. Declare the same thing. One, two, go. But, but the Lord, Lord is with me as a, as a mighty, mighty terrible one. one. Therefore, my persecution shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. They shall not prosper. The everlasting confusion shall never turn to another direction. Say it for the last time. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. They shall not prosper. The everlasting confusion. Shall never be. Put your hands together. Scream. 